Uh, the game is based uh, uh, mostly on uh, the siege of Sarajevo during the Balkan War, but also on many other uh, many other uh, tragic events during wars, including the uh, Warsaw Rising during the Second World War. And our task is to survive the war. And uh, we uh, we have uh, several people under control uh, who just taken residence in a ruined building. They don't know what to do initially, and the player doesn't know how to start, how to begin, what to do. They have no food, uh, the houses are ruined, and the first task is just to decide what to do. Search the rubble, search the uh, ruins for things that might be useful, try to improve uh, this place, turn it uh, slowly, bit by bit, turn it from a ruin into something that can be home, that can shelter them during this time. This is, uh, soldiers, war is about as I victory. said, the player who starts this For game us, doesn't know what to do. There is no through. tutorial, there is no introduction. When you start the game, you, you only know that you have to survive. And we didn't tell we don't tell the player how long, because when uh, war breaks out, people who are uh, who are involved who are, who's, who are suffering the consequences, they don't know the date, they don't know when war will end. They only know that they have to survive to live another day and hope that the next day might bring them peace. So this is a survival game, it's a very popular genre, but usually we are surviving a zombie apocalypse or something like that. And we thought that there are things that... Uh, oh, yeah. And when night comes, one of our people can uh, go out and try to find something useful in the ruins of the city. During the day we, we have to keep to the shelter because of the snipers. But night is relatively safe. So one, one of them can sleep, one of them usually remains on guard because uh, during the night we can be attacked, uh, our shelter can be attacked by, uh, by raiders, by bandits. And, and one of them goes uh, to search for food, for useful materials. Those red circles that are moving towards the door, it's sound. There is someone or something inside the house. We don't know what's the source. It was a rat. It was just a rat. But sometimes we can meet uh, armed, armed bandits, we can meet uh, soldiers, but we can also meet other people like us who are also trying to find something useful. Uh, we can uh, sometimes meet people who are better off than us, who managed to, to uh, find some food, to find something valuable. And sometimes we can uh, take from them. But we have always a choice whether to, uh, to uh, steal, to fight, sometimes even to kill, or or leave them alone. So, but in some situations this is a choice which is very difficult, because we can easily obtain medicines or food when our, our uh, people are starving or dying from some illness, but at what cost? All right, so uh, this is a game about war. War games are very popular uh, and there are many of them. And this one is different. But so this is a very popular game, Civilization VI. It's a game which I personally like very much. But 
it can tell us something about war, about reasons for war. Was it resources we needed? Was it a conflict in values? Was the reason that my neighbor attacked someone who was my friend? But does war look like this in reality? This is another very good war game, Hearts of Iron 3, about the Second World War. It goes into very great detail into how war is fought. It doesn't interest itself with reasons and consequences. It's mostly numbers. But that doesn't tell us very much about war. This is another very good game about war. Uh, it's, it's called Brave Hearts, and it's, it's a, a, an adventure game about the First World War. And it gets something right, it, because it follows a single soldier who is not trying to win the war. He's just trying to survive. He's trying to uh, save uh, his uh, relatives to return to his family. But it, it's still a soldier and he's still fighting. That's why I think this war of money, mine is different. Because this war of mine is a game about the civilians the victims of war. It's a game about those who, while suffering the consequences of war, can't do anything to alter the course of the war. So, the idea actually wasn't, we didn't start it out with the idea of making an anti-war game anti-war war game, so to say. We had a, a prototype of a survival game, and our CEO, Grzegorz <coughs> Michowski, has read an, uh, a piece uh, about uh, the city of Sarajevo, what people did. Uh, it was an autobiographical uh, piece, what people did to survive in besieged Sarajevo. And he decided that this is, uh, we didn't have a theme. It, we had a very basic prototype of a survival game in a shelter, but it lacked a theme. And when he came up with this idea, we felt instantly that we have to make this game because this is something we felt very strongly about. This is something that uh, resonated with us very strongly from the beginning. And we started making this war of mine. This is a game about surviving a model con uh, conflict in a besieged city during a civil war. And it focuses entirely on the uh, civilians, but on what, what's more important uh, their fate is uh, our most important uh, measure of our success in the game. Not only the physical survival, because when we, when we end the game, if we manage to keep our people alive until the end of war, we learn about what happened to them after the war ended. And as I said, they can, I mean, we can make them do things that uh, we, would, we wouldn't do ourselves uh, in order to survive. We can uh, make them steal, fight, and even kill to, to survive. And depending on the situation, because fighting in self-defense uh, is uh, sometimes necessary. 
but fighting to get a can of of uh, of meat is something completely different even if it say if it saves us from starvation so <clears throat> all things that they do cause trauma can cause trauma and depending on what they had to do to survive their post war fates can be different are different the whole all the stories in our game are based on accounts of survivors mostly <coughs> of uh, the uh, Sarajevo siege uh, but also of uh, the siege of Warsaw in uh, the, the Warsaw rising in 1944 and many many others uh, like siege of Grozny for example and uh, we didn't have to invent anything the source material is unfortunately very rich and all the stories that uh, happen in the game are based on uh, on real stories of, of survivors of violent conflicts so our goal was to show in the game that the civilians are the the victims of war that they bear the biggest cost of war not the soldiers who yes they they uh, fight they can die but they uh, they are taking part in war uh, they, they are taking an active part while civilians uh, suffer only the consequences uh, we wanted to show that even if, if they do survive the price of their survival can be very high because because the emotional wounds can never heal there are accounts of people who manage to physically survive the war or the death camps but uh, they, they they didn't uh, manage to put together their lives back again and some of them committed suicide so we knew that we cannot sink our boat with our gift so to say we have to make a game that will be playable a game that will also sell because that's our, the ultimate reason of of the existence of a company everyone has its uh, he, their own private reasons for creating but the company has to make money so we had to design a game that shows this very somber subject and still remains playable so we based it as as much as possible on real events uh, and the mechanics in the game are based on uh, things that people actually did but we decided in some cases to not to go too far not not to turn the game into a survival simulator because some things some technical details were not important from the point of view uh, of uh, what we wanted to say uh, the game is difficult and as I said it doesn't have any tutorial because we wanted to an extent recreate in the players the feeling when you when your when the war breaks out nobody hands out uh, the manuals you don't you you learn what to do in the new situation you don't know initially what to do in a new and completely different situation where when get, getting basic things is uh, is a challenge so as i said earlier we decided to make the uh, physical and mental condition of our people of civilians a main measure of of our success in the game so not uh, so in many games the success is measured in uh, a number of kills for example or number of days 
uh, we managed to uh, to spend in uh, in the game or something like that. And here we based it on how well we cared about our people. Uh, from my personal point of view, uh, the biggest challenge was uh, remaining faithful to the uh, to the the language used by the survivors, because when I did my research, uh, I learned that people wrote about the most terrible things, the, mo the, the worst atrocities, using very simple language. Very, there were not no uh, high words in there. The language was very plain. Even and especially when when they were talking about about the the worst things, so that's what uh, we tried to keep in the game. And this, for for me as a writer, the second challenge, which is first here, was not to write too much. If we can show something, we do it. We don't. Uh, we don't. Uh, we try not to uh, explain the emotional state of of our people. We try to show them. So, if someone is depressed, he moves slower. He he's slouched, and from time to time, can uh, when we want him or her to do something, they can refuse, saying that it, it doesn't make any sense. It. it it's all for nothing or something like that, but we don't. So we don't de describe the emotional states uh, uh, using w words as much as we can. And uh, uh, we decided to treat the most difficult subjects at a, a remove. I mean that we are not witnessing. Uh, some of some of the worst things that happen during armed conflicts, uh, we can uh, our people can die. Uh, we can also kill uh, another person in the game, but uh, but the, the rapes, ch the death of children, and mass killings are something that we only learn second hand. There is one scene in the game where uh, we encounter. Uh, a girl who is assaulted by a soldier, and we can try to intervene. Uh, and usually, if we do, uh, our uh, character in the game dies because that's what would happen in this situation. But if we don't, we later re learn that that uh, she was raped and and murdered <laughs> after that. But we are not witnessing the fact because we decided that we cannot risk losing. Our uh, our audience. We cannot. We already knew that we are exposing ourselves to accusations of profiting from uh, uh, depicting such scenes. And there is another thing. We wanted kids to be part of the game from the beginning because they are part uh, of every war. They suffer the most. They lose things that they need the most when they need them most. They lose friends. They lose the uh, ability to receive education. They lose security. They sometimes lose their parents. But we, we didn't know if people will buy such a game. So that's why children were uh, included in an expansion after after this war of mine succeeded uh, quite spectacularly, but uh, so <coughs> yeah, and for me, uh, writing, we, we during the research we read a lot of of uh, scientific articles of, uh, on children psychology psychology in uh, of children involved in, in uh, armed conflict and unfortunately here also the literature is quite rich uh, 
and uh, writing the kids the right way was also quite a difficult challenge. But so, as I said, we we felt that we have to do it. That from the start, this is something that we want to be a part of, and. Uh, we are, of course, very happy that the game sold very well and that people... It turned out that people are ready for such a game. People are ready for major games, for games exploring difficult, painful subjects. As I said, we didn't uh, set out to make an <coughs> anti-war game, but it turns out that when you uh, strive to make a, a game that depicts the war the way it looks, it is an anti-war game. So, I think that that's it.